This is the Spotlight segment. Stay tuned for premium interviews, device unboxing and more. And now we're moving on to the Spotlight segment where I will give my review and thoughts on the OnePlus 12. Here it is. Hi, and welcome to this review and demonstration of the OnePlus 12. I've had it for about two weeks now, and it's a good phone. I like it. <laughs> of course, I'm going to get a little more specific. I will start with the hardware. The build quality is great. No complaints there. The weight is nice. The size is nice. Obviously, this stuff is subjective, but I had to mention it. It's a great build, which you'd expect for $800, which is the starting price in the US. To be more specific, though, the screen is good. It's very bright for those of you who need bright screens. It's not as bright as they make it seem, though. I'll say that. It is close to the S24 series, and it's close to the Pixel 8 series. But I don't think it gets brighter than those. It's probably a little bit dimmer than those. It's plenty bright for me, but when it's maxed out, it feels like it falls a little short of those. I know the advertised nits on this thing, peak brightness is something ridiculous, like 4,500 nits, you know, whereas the Pixel 8 series and the Galaxy S24 series are in the 2000s when it comes to peak brightness, but this isn't day-to-day -day uses. This is just when you're out in the sun and it cranks it up to full brightness. You don't really notice day to day that it's that it can be that bright because they limit it. Even if you set the brightness to 100%, it's not really pulling the full brightness of the screen. But it is a good screen, and I like it. And then as far as the speakers go, the speakers are great. I When I crank it up to full volume and put it next to my S24 Ultra, it holds up. It doesn't get quite as loud, but I think the lower frequencies, the, the bass of it actually is a little more defined at that higher volume than it is on the S24 Ultra. Even though I feel like the S24 Ultra does get louder and it's more crisp when it comes to the highs. But comparable, and you know, that's the point. It doesn't feel like you're settling for something less. I do like the vibration a lot. The haptics are really good on this. I actually, they're so strong, I cranked them down to about 50%. But they're really strong and they're not rattly, you know, to use a technical term. <laughs> it's, uh, it's strong without feeling like you're hearing it. So you're you're feeling it without hearing it, if that makes any sense. And I like the I like that and it feels good to me. I'm impressed with those. It I was it, it's disappointing when you come across something that has bad haptics. So I had to mention that. These have great haptics. I love having the switch on the side. The mute switch which has three settings so if you're holding the phone facing you if the switch is all the way down then the sound is on if you slide it up one to the middle setting that is vibrate and if you slide it all the way up that is off or silent mode and one thing i one quirk with talkback that i have to point out is that in the settings, if you have it set to also mute your media volume when your phone is on silent, then TalkBack will announce that change. And I'll just demonstrate it for you. So if, you're, if you think you're going to be sneaky and just adjust the switch while your phone is in your pocket to put your phone on silent, 
the talkback will announce that whatever your accessibility volume is set to. So if you have it set loud, it will yell what the new volume is. So I'm just going to show you. The screen is off right now, and I'm going to slide the switch up. Music volume set to 81%. And you'll hear. It, it normally says music volume set to zero. It might be saying the actual volume because I have it. I'm casting right now, so it doesn't actually mute it, maybe. But it will normally say music volume set to 0%, and it will say it as loud as you have the accessibility volume set. So definitely needed to point that out. I will also show you a workaround for that. Two Open sound and vibration settings. Opening sound. So the setting I mentioned earlier is turn off media sounds in silent mode, on, switch. This, you're going to want this off if you want to be able to put your phone in silent without it talking. Off. So now I'm going to turn the screen off. Charged. Screen off. Ringer silent. Music volume set to 81%. Now I'm going to slide the switch to the on position. I'm going to slide it to the silent position now. And it doesn't say anything. So that's the workaround for that. Unfortunately, you can't have both. You can either have it mute your media volume when you silence your phone, or you can have it not make the announcement if you have TalkBack on. I don't have any complaints about the face unlock or fingerprint unlock on this. Well, I do have a little <laughs> bit of complaints about the fingerprint unlock, but the face unlock works good. I'll just demonstrate that. 2.39 p.m. Scanning face. Charged. Unlocked by face. Sounds and vibration. Device unlocked. So very chatty, but um, it did open it immediately. I'm going to go back to the home. System launcher. Screen. Telegram. Turn it off. Charged. Screen off. Ringer silent. So screen on, and PM. it's unlocked already. Charge. Screen off. Unlocked. Screen off. Ringer silent. Same with the fingerprint sensor. It's pretty fast. Two thirty. Robo rock. On. Charge. Off. Screen off. Ringer silent. Device now. unlocked. On. System off. launcher. Screen off. Ringer okay. silent. Well, Device unlocked. On. System off. launcher. Screen so, off. Ringer silent. Talkback is very chattery, but it unlocks quickly. It's reliable. It's accurate. The complaints I have about the fingerprint sensor are more from just bugs and functionality. One isn't so much a complaint, it's just a disappointment. There's this cool feature that you can enable where you can select up to five shortcuts that you assign to the fingerprint sensor. And if you press and hold on the screen, your phone will unlock. And then you can slide to one of the shortcuts you've assigned, whether it be an action or opening an app or something like that. And that's a quick way to get to like a specific app, you know, you're gonna be using a lot like Lookout or Seeing AI or Magnifier, something like that. The problem is it's not accessible with TalkBack. I mean, you can do it, but you have to do a pass-through gesture before you even unlock it. And then as you're sliding around, you'll feel a vibration when you're on the item you want to select. So if you know the location of the screen, you can do it, but it won't give you any audible feedback. You won't hear TalkBack say what you're about to do. So it's basically not accessible. Another bug, and this is a bug Samsung phones used to have, and I'll show you. 2.41 p.m. Charged. Unlocked by face. Device unlocked. System launcher. I'm going to open Telegram. Telegram. So I'm here in a conversation, and the keyboard's on screen, so I'm editing the edit box right now. What the problem is, if and this isn't just a Telegram bug, this is any time you're in an app where the keyboard will stay on screen when you turn off the phone. So I'm going to turn off the Charged. Screen. screen off. Ringer silent. And I'm going to unlock with my fingerprint. 240, capital T, showing English, U.S. QWERTY, save messages. Editing, T, edit box, message. And as you heard, it put a T in there because my thumb had touched the screen. And it doesn't matter if you hold your thumb on the screen or not. It will register a touch on the keyboard 
So really the only way around that is to be conscious of whether or not there's going to be a keyboard on the screen and kind of slide your finger off the keyboard before you release. Now, obviously, this only applies if you have lift to type enabled. So if you are a double tap typer, this won't affect you. But this is an annoying bug that I've come across and just had to point it out. Another hardware issue that I've noticed is I'm not a huge fan of the Bluetooth connection. It seems to have my headphones lose connection and have to reconnect themselves automatically from time to time. It also does this weird thing where my AirPods don't respect the absolute volume setting that I have disabled. Just the AirPods, the other all the other earbuds that I've tried, they work how they're supposed to. Although I have noticed they don't get as loud on this device when I'm using absolute volume as they do on other devices. But I think the main issue is that I've noticed more lag when using TalkBack on this device with this these Bluetooth connections. And these are the same Bluetooth devices I have used on other phones. So it's definitely something to do with this phone that makes Bluetooth a little more laggy when it comes to TalkBack. I don't know what's going on there, but had to mention it. It's a little bit of a frustration. Something that I've been disappointed in is the mic quality. Now, it's it's not a bad mic, but I don't like how it sounds, and this is a personal opinion. I've If you've been in the Telegram group, you know you've seen me complaining about it, and a lot, a lot of people disagree. They say it sounds fine, but I don't like the sound of it. I'm going to give you some samples to let you decide for yourself. But for me, it just sounds too processed, like there's some noise cancellation going on. And, you know, while that doesn't bother me in social media apps like Telegram, where I'm just leaving a voice message, that's not how I want my videos to sound when I'm recording videos with my family. So I want my memories to sound good. And this doesn't sound the best, in my opinion. So here are a couple samples for you. I'll just insert a audio recording using the voice recording app and then a quick video that I recorded using the camera app. Here is a test recording using the OnePlus 12. I'm not sure if it's recording in stereo or not, but this is the bottom microphone or the right microphone, and this is the top or left microphone. And I will follow this recording with a sample video I took earlier. Hey bro, what you doing? You playing? Are you playing Paw Patrol? Sounds exciting. And now the last thing I want to mention while I'm talking about hardware is the battery life and charging speeds. This is easily the new battery champ as far as phones I've used personally. I get on average two days out of this phone and that's with the screen brightness at 100%. So that's more than I've ever gotten on any other phone. It's because it's got a large battery at 5,400 milliamp hours. And of course it's using the latest Snapdragon processor, the 8 Gen 3, which is even more efficient than the 8 Gen 2 was. So that combines to give a really good battery life. I'd say usually I'm down to like 60 or 65% after one day. And usually if it's like 65%, I just don't charge it. And I'll go through another day and I'll be down to like maybe 30 or 25%. So I could even squeeze three days out of it if I wanted to. but. I'd say there's only really been one or two times that I've felt like I had to charge it after one day. And even in those scenarios, it didn't even get down to 50%. So I'd say a screen on time, I'm probably getting at least 10 hours, probably more like 12 hours of screen on time with one battery usage. 
and the battery charging speeds are great as well. So it's 100 watt wired charging or it's 50 watt wireless charging. So just putting it on the wireless charger when it's down to like 50%, it'll tell me that the battery will be fully charged in like 20 minutes or something, which is crazy for a wireless charger. And then if you plug it in, I've I've gotten it down to like 10% and I'd be like, I'm just going to plug it in for a couple minutes. I come back maybe 20 minutes later and it's up to like 60% or something. So it's just ridiculous how fast this thing charges. So I never feel like I ever have to worry about battery life. Of course, if you're not comfortable with fast charging speeds because you're worried about battery health, you can turn all this stuff off. It has smart charging features. It can adapt to your routine so that it slowly charges it overnight and will have it ready at the time you usually wake up, that sort of thing. So those features are all there for you to take advantage of if you want to. But also, if you just want it to charge as fast as possible whenever you plug it in, it can do that as well. Now I'm going to demonstrate some of the software for you and show you some of the quirks that I've come across and tell you how accessible it is. I'll just start by saying most of the apps are accessible and meaning OnePlus's apps. They use Google's phone app and they use Google's messages app. So there's no worries there unless Google causes a problem. But the OnePlus apps, such as their camera app, their voice recorder app, their files app, their IR blaster app, all their apps seem to be mostly labeled for the most part. And I haven't come into any big issues with them. So I was impressed with that. However, the actual Oxygen OS has some quirks to it and some frustrating things, and I will go ahead and demonstrate some of those. So I'm on the home screen right now, and I'm just going to swipe through some items. News. Internet. And we do have actions. Add to home screen. Move item. Shortcuts and notifications. Activate. But the problem is there's no remove action. And if you go to move item, like on a Pixel phone, there's no remove option. So the only way you can remove an item from your home screen is by going to shortcuts and notifications. This in actions or by long pressing the app icon. I'll take you to the same shortcuts. place. Shortcuts. Selected. New tab. Edit. Button. And then you'll have all these options. Shelf widgets, button. Settings, button. And the thing about these... Not interested, button. Some of them are labeled weird. Like, not interested means exit. Like, it's just an X. Remove folder, button. And some items like remove folder are actually dimmed out, but it doesn't tell you that. So if you double tap now, nothing would happen because this is not a folder. But... Share, button. If you go to remove, uninstall, button, remove, button, this will remove it from your screen. System launcher, remove, internet, after you confirm, remove the internet shortcut, cancel. So you have to long press it, find remove, and then confirm to, to remove every item. And I found that a little annoying. The other thing you're going to want to know if you're using this launcher is the only way to get to settings, wallpaper, and all that is to use the pinch gesture because you can't put the home screen itself in focus and then go to actions. So you'll have to put two fingers on the screen and slide them together. Facebook. And once you feel a vibration near the bottom. Wallpapers. You'll have your icons, options. Widgets. Layout. Transitions. Unlabeled. And here's what I'm going to explain is the most annoying thing about Oxygen OS. So as you heard, Transitions. It went straight from Transitions. Unlabeled. To something unlabeled. And what that unlabeled item is, I don't even want to call it a button. It's just a page indicator. It's a visual indicator. It doesn't tell us which page is selected. It does, doesn't let us choose which page to select. And when you're swiping through the items, it does not scroll. So I'm going to go back, slide my finger left to go back one item. Transitions. What you're going to have to do here, and 
in some other places that I'll show you is you're going to have to slide two fingers to the left to scroll this. So let's see what that did. Transitions. Now I can swipe from transitions. More. To more. Unlabeled. So there was just one more item called more. More. And that would take you to the actual System settings. launcher. Navigate up. Button. So this is the settings for the home screen. I won't show you all these settings. But I will go back home. Keyboard hidden. System launcher. Keyboard hidden. System launcher. Facebook. Those are the main issues I have with it. Hulu. If you double tap and hold. Shortcuts. Selected. App info. System launcher. Move to row 1 column 5. Create. Move to row 3 column 3. And slide your finger around. It will tell you where you're going. So that works. It will tell you which page you're on if you swipe with two fingers to change page. Page 2 of 2. So it's a good launcher, I guess, as long as you know the workarounds to get where you need to get. What's not good, however, is the recents page, which I'll show you now. Recent apps. Google. So I'm just going to Google. I put my thumb in the center of the screen to put the last app in focus. I'm going to swipe left. Google. Recorder. Swipe left again. Telegram. And swipe left again. Google. I'm going to I'm going to touch the middle of the screen. Google. Okay, I just want to make sure that was actually Google. I'm going to swipe again. More button. So see, now it decided to go to the more button, which does nothing if you double tap on it. I'm going to swipe again. Google. Swipe again. More button. So it's really weird when you swipe. Google. You don't know what it's going to go to. More button. YouTube music, YT music. And see, now I've swiped to the right and it's gotten to YouTube music somehow. And it didn't pass over it when I was swiping left. So it's obnoxious to say the least. It um, There's also this whole row of icons at the bottom that are unla Messages. unlabeled. Let's unlabeled. See. Yeah. And these page are two of 44 unlabeled. See, I don't know what page two of 44 was about. Unlabeled. Maybe I have 44 apps open. That's a lot. But yeah, these unlabeled buttons at the bottom are just icons for the apps that are open to make it easier for the sighted <laughs> to, to get to the app without having to like actually move the page to that app. So I will say messages. It does have actions. Close. App info. Split top. Activate. And the actions do work. There is that. But navigating this page, especially if you're swiping, is frustrating. If you do it with two fingers already, and that's just what you're used to, it'll work fine for you. But that's not how I do it. So I've actually found myself just going back to the home screen and opening the app that I want to go back to because that's easier for me than trying to find it in the recents page, which is sad. So that's my demonstration of the recents page. I'm going to go back home. System launcher. Search. Now I'm going to just briefly describe to you the notification shade. Notification shade. On, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi signal full, Nymeria, switch. So the way this is laid out is there's Two switches across the top. On, Bluetooth, not connected, switch. So mine are Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And each of these buttons take up roughly 50% of the width of the screen because it's just a row of two buttons. So they're wide buttons. But then when you get to the second row of buttons. Screen recording. These are half the width. So there's actually a row of four. So it's a row of two. And below that is a row of four. And then below that, 100% display brightness progress bar is the brightness slider. And you cannot adjust this by swiping up or down. It just won't work. It's not an actual slider. So you'll have to double tap, hold, and drag to adjust the brightness. It does tell you the brightness as you're adjusting it. So that's good. Just be aware of that. And to the right of this, not checked brightness checkbox. That button that's just 
incorrectly labeled brightness it should be labeled auto brightness so keep that in mind if you want your screen to adjust brightness with your environment then make sure that's checked i won't go into actual notifications themselves they work they're good you could dismiss them with actions no issues there so when you expand to the quick settings do not disturb quick settings it's basically the same layout it's just added two more rows of icons below that row of four icons so now there's three rows of four icons and then the brightness slider and i'm going to show you how to adjust quick settings because there's a little quirk here as well so near the top right you'll find modify the settings order button and when you double tap this it's going to seem like nothing happens i double tapped it and nothing happened but it did bring up a menu on screen you'll either have to find that menu by exploring the screen or just by navigating to the next window i'll navigate to the next window edit tiles so we have edit tiles media output and media output i'm going to go to edit tiles edit tiles quick settings editor navigate up button i'm going to show you how to edit tiles here i think the easiest way because these don't have actions the easiest way to add a tile is to double tap on a tile that's not in quick settings so a tile along the bottom of the screen that will add it to the quick settings that are at the top of the screen if you double tap on one of the settings that's already up there it will remove it so that's how you add and remove unfortunately the only way to rearrange the order bluetooth not connected button i'm going to double tap and hold this is how you have screen to do recording, it recording button and as you're moving your finger it doesn't say anything so this part is not accessible it might be easier to just add the icons you want there in the order you want them to be and then remove everything you don't want there so that's disappointing and then again at the bottom of the screen app lock button and you'll notice this is a theme with oxygen os same thing as when i showed you the options at the bottom of the home screen like wallpaper widgets and all that if you swipe through these mobile data flashlight location unlabeled when you get to the end it just goes down to the unlabeled page indicator so same thing here location reporting on button you have to swipe or slide with two fingers airplane mode to go to the next page button screenshot and you'll hear the next button that goes in focus button screen lock so that's how you'll know it's changed pages but that's how you have to change pages on these icons using talkback to swipe through items won't automatically scroll and even using talkback's scroll gesture will also not work so i'll go back to the home screen system launcher search i'm going to show you one more thing open files downloads Trade in instructions, SA5305828380.pdf, five three zero five eight two eight three zero dot PDF, 94.64 kilobytes from six days ago. So I'm just going to show you what happens when you try to share something. Show file actions button. Pop up window. Select. Share. Downloads. Share. Cancel. This is the same thing I've been describing earlier. You'll have one row. Anthony Burner messages. Of contacts and below that. Nearby share you'll have six icons so there's two rows of three i'll swipe through them telegram gmail discord messages print and when i swipe again unlabeled same situation so in order to go to the next page you have to swipe with two fingers so that's how you also have to navigate the share sheet i think these are the only three areas i've noticed that have this issue but it wouldn't surprise me if it crops up somewhere else as well now i'm going to show you a couple of things in the accessibility settings open settings settings search edit box 
the first thing I'm going to show you is how to get to them <laughs> because they're a little bit hidden. Scroll all the way down in settings and look. Location. It's not at the very bottom, but it's near the bottom. Digital will be additional settings. Additional setting is where you're going to want to go. Additional settings. Navigate up button. Accessibility. And the fourth or fifth one down is accessibility. Accessibility. Navigate up button. And when you go into it. Accessibility. There's tabs. Selected. General. General is where you would assign shortcuts and that type of thing. Vision. Of course, vision is the main place we're going to go. I'm going to double tap here. Vision. Selected. Page 2. Talkback. Here items on the screen. Now I'm going to go into Talkback to show you something. Talkback. Navigate up. Button. Now whether or not you want to turn this off <laughs> is up to you. Watermark prompt. Off. Switch. There's something called a watermark prompt that I found very obnoxious. And what it is, is it's a permanent message that is on the screen when you have TalkBack enabled that is basically telling a sighted person how to turn TalkBack off. I think it says something along the lines of to turn, to leave TalkBack mode, press both volume keys and hold them or something like that. But it's just a constant message that's there. You know, if you're completely blind and don't care, it won't bother you. It won't affect the functionality of the phone, but it's there and it's there during setup. There's no way to remove it during setup. So if you are low vision and you're trying to set up your phone, just be aware that you're not going to be able to get rid of this thing until you have your phone set up. So for example, like when I went to put in my pattern, you can really see what I was doing because it was blocking the pattern. I'm assuming it would block the keyboard or the number pad if you're putting in a password or something like that. So something you should definitely be aware of. I'm going to back out of here. Accessibility. Talkback. Here items on the screen. Below Talkback we have... Describe images. Recognize image content and read it out. I found this interesting because I haven't seen this accessibility setting on any other phone. It's called Describe Images. And what it does is... It describes images. <laughs> it's... If you put TalkBack's focus on something and just sit there for a second or two and it's an image, it will try to describe the image. It's not great. I'd say it's about on par with TalkBack's built-in image description. It's not going to be anything like Be My AI or Seeing AI or anything like that. It's just going to give a very minimal description that, in my opinion, is not very helpful at all. But... It's nice to see that they've added it here. And it's not exactly the same as TalkBacks. Like it will describe things differently, but it's not any better. So they're using their own way of describing things, but it's also not very effective. But I had to give them credit for putting this accessibility feature in here. It also works without TalkBack. If you are not a TalkBack user, you can just tap on an image if this is enabled and it will use the TTS engine to read you a description of that image. While I'm in accessibility settings, I just wanted to mention that the accessibility shortcut works great. Some phones and some versions of Android have issues with this gesture, which is to swipe up from the very bottom of the screen with three fingers. I haven't had any issues here. It's very reliable. It lets you swipe up and hold to choose your accessibility service if you have multiple services assigned to the gesture. And then if you just swipe up with three fingers and let go without holding, it will perform the last one you had selected. So it works similar to how a Pixel works and not how a Galaxy works where a Galaxy, if you have multiple services assigned to the shortcut, it will always ask you which one you want to run. It won't just run the last one that you've selected. Also need to point out that if you invert your colors, it will not refresh the page. I know that sounds silly to have to mention, but that's something that happens on Pixel phones, so I always check it on other phones. If you invert the colors and you're in the middle of doing something on a website, you don't have to worry about losing all of the information you filled in or anything like that.
So as far as features go, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some features that are not necessarily accessibility features, but just my opinions on them and what I liked and didn't like. I'm going to start off by showing you a way that you can go to the last app. This is off by default, but you can turn it on in navigation gesture settings. So if you use navigation gestures, you can swipe in from the side with two fingers and hold to go into the last app. So in the same way that you would swipe up from the bottom and hold to go to recents instead of just swiping up from the bottom with two fingers and letting go to go home, you can now go to the last app by holding instead of just going back. So it's the back gesture, but you hold instead of letting go. And I'll just demonstrate it real quick. News. I'll open a couple apps. News, news, Google News for you, WebView, System Launcher, Facebook, Internet. So open news and internet. Internet. Search orders, Samsung US, WebView. So I'm in the internet app, Samsung Internet. I'm just going to swipe in with two fingers until I feel a vibration and let go. News, Google News for you, and WebView. And just like that, I'm back in news and you can do it quickly. Internet. Search orders, Samsung US, WebView, News. So just like Google that. Google News for you, WebView. It's a very easy way to switch apps. I normally just use TalkBack's recent gesture and do that recent gesture twice to get to the last app. But this is actually a little more convenient than that. Obviously, if you have navigation buttons, you can just double tap the recent button twice to get to the last app. But this is a nice addition that they've added. I think overall, it was not as customizable as I expected it to be as far as features go. I feel like OnePlus has added some nice features, but they've added them their way, and you can't really change it. I'll give you an example. So as a screen off gesture, you can draw an O or a circle on the screen to go into the camera. You can also double press the power button to go into the camera. You can also double press one of the volume buttons to go into the camera. Now, these are three different ways to get to the camera that you can turn on in different places of the settings, but you can't change what they do. So there's three different ways to do one thing, and you can't make it do anything else. So that's how some of these screen off gestures are. There's not as many gestures as the Asus Zenfone had, I think there's, well, total there's five gestures you can do, but two of them are predefined. So camera and flashlight, they, you can't change. You can turn them on or off, but you can't change what they do. And then there's three other symbols you can draw that are customizable. Whereas on the Asus phone, I think there were six different ones you could draw and you could customize all of them. So it's just not as customizable as I was hoping it would be. One other thing I have noticed about the screen off gestures on this specifically is you kind of have to get them exactly right. If you're drawing a bracket to go to the previous track, for example, you kind of have to get it perfect or close to perfect. Whereas on the Zen phone, if you slid your finger left and then slid it right, it, it would just guess. The only reason he'd be doing this gesture is because he's trying to draw, draw an angle bracket. So you didn't have to be so precise on the Asus. Whereas this, I mean, you can get it with practice, but you have to do the gesture exactly how it needs to be done to get these screen off gestures to work. Another thing I really like about this phone is how the power menu works. So after bringing up the power menu, all you have to do is swipe up with two fingers to restart your phone or swipe down with two fingers to power off your phone. And that is just so quick and so convenient. So depending on what you have your button set to do, so either long pressing the side key or pressing the side key and the volume up key at the same time, depending on whether you use the side key for an assistant or not, one of those gestures will bring up your power menu. And from there you just swipe. So I'm just gonna show you how quickly I can power off the phone. I'm just gonna hit those two buttons Phone options. Swipe, Swipe down. Up. Music volume muted. And just like that, 
my phone just vibrated, it's powered down. So that's definitely the quickest way I've ever known to power down or restart a phone, and I've really liked it. Well, that brings us to the end of this review. I did my best to kind of cover all the oddities and quirks with Oxygen OS. I don't want it to come across as I'm complaining about it or saying it's a bad phone. I really do like the phone, but you just have to learn how to use it. So hopefully I've helped with that if you're considering getting this phone. Thanks for listening. So do any of you have any questions about the device other than what I mentioned in the review? So can Eloquence be installed on the phone and any 32-bit app? So it's only 64-bit. No, it cannot. I tried to install it and it would not install. So it might be a limitation of the processor since it, since it didn't um, work on the S24 series either. So yeah, thanks for asking that. I know a lot of people want to know the answer to that. Okay, I have a question. Uh, we know that S24 was released recently. And I think that the price of the base model the vanilla model is the same as the price of the OnePlus 12. Is it right? Yes. So the question is, uh, like in, in your opinion, you, you use the S24 Plus. Yeah, not the S24, the base model. But we will say that they are close. So uh, what do you think if a person is going to, to have a purchase and this person is going to choose? Uh, do you think that it is better to go with the S24? Or with the OnePlus 12? Hmm. I, I think it's a personal choice because if you're going with the S24, it's probably because you want a smaller phone. Because this is more on the this is more the same size as the S24 Plus. And also the OnePlus, it starts with twice the storage. So it, the base model at $800 will get you 256 gigabytes of storage rather than 128, which is still what the S24 starts at. But um, yeah, I think it's a personal decision. I would probably, if I had to choose between the two, I would go with the OnePlus, but I would miss some Samsung things because, you know, I'm a Samsung lover. It also comes down to the UI because uh... OnePlus, they are either partnering with Color OS or sometimes they're going back to Oxygen OS. I don't know what they're doing. So some people may not like the UI. So it even comes down to that. But if you like take S24 base base model and the OnePlus 12 bit for bit, then how, what segments do you think OnePlus is better? What do you think is S S24 better in? Are you talking about software? No, like everything, processor, display, battery, everything. I'd say they're pretty equivalent. I mean, I would trust Samsung's cameras more. I can't, obviously, I can't tell you how good of pictures th this phone takes, but, you know, from the reviews I've read, I think Samsung is going to give you the better pictures from the camera. And as far as everything else, displays seem close. Uh, sound seems close. Build quality is really nice on both. They both have wireless charging. OnePlus definitely has better, faster charging, I should say. Battery life is better on the OnePlus. So, but then, you know, Samsung has, in my opinion, more features, especially if you use good luck and all that, routines and stuff like that. Yeah, but the extra stuff that you get in the box just deserve uh, thinking about them. Because they give you a lot of things. Uh, like if you compare uh, OnePlus to to Samsung, you will get many things, many more things in the in the box, like the charger, which is I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong. Was it is it forty five watt charger? Um, I think it's a one hundred watt charger. It's oh my they God. charge yeah. If you buy it separately, they charge you fifty dollars for it. So they include their fifty dollar charger in the box. This is not related to the review. This is like a separate news segment. But if you buy the OnePlus 12R, then the company has told by mistake that it uses UFS 4, but it uses UFS 3.1. And now they are issuing refunds. So 
if you want to check out the OnePlus 12R, you can buy it and then uh, apply for a refund. Oh my gosh! So they didn't, they didn't even know what their own phones had in them. Interesting. No, they they mentioned the specs by mistake. So the storage of UFS 4.0 by mistake. That's what they are saying. Gotcha. Somebody made a mistake then. So OnePlus has uh, really good ringtones uh, recent in, in the recent phones, and they are working with really good orchestras. Did you like the new ringtones on the 12 phone? I'm glad you mentioned it. Yeah, I did. I, yeah. I'm trying to figure out a way to get them for when I go back to my Samsung phone because <laughs> I've set up a lot of notifications. Yeah, they're really good. That I really like. Yeah. I haven't really listened to the actual ringtone so much, but when I was choosing my notification sounds, I, I like to have different sounds for different apps so that I don't really have to look at my phone when I get a notification. And I did like the selection they had. Yeah, speaking of ringtones, LG used to be real good, and now I'm glad to see OnePlus is replacing them because Samsung or any other manufacturers, they don't really pay attention to the ringtones. They have some basic ringtones, but the rest is really garbage, isn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. When you are able to um, share them or to copy them, just share them in the group because I also like ringtones so much, and I didn't listen to OnePlus ringtones before. So it is interesting. And it is easy, by the way, to share them. I read that the OnePlus 12 has a finger, fingerprint sensor that uh, works well when your hands or when your fingers are wet. So did you try this? Is it really working well? I did not try that, but it does work really well for an optical fingerprint sensor. I didn't really have any issues with it at all. It's because the pixels also use an optical and they don't work nearly as good as this does. Interesting. Yeah, but just uh, give it a try. It will be interesting to know. Should I try it right now live on the air? Yeah, that will be good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wetting my hand now. I'll just kind of flick them dry. Let's see. It did unlock. I didn't dry it off and it did unlock. Wow. So this is really something that they worked on. That's nice. Cause I, I do, I have run into that situation a lot in the past where I've washed my hands and I haven't really dried my hands off and I try to get into my phone and then it won't let me in. Yeah. Especially that when the phone is IP68 or IP67 rated and you are unable to unlock it with your fingerprint, you know, I, I think that this makes um like using this privilege less so this is good that they worked on that one of the thing where you should get the samsung instead of one plus is the very iconic slider that makes your phone into silent or dnd even when your phone is in the pocket you can just move the slider up with your finger and put it in silent mode that slider is the best and i think oneplus is the only phone in android that has the slider they had removed it in one of the phones which i don't remember which one was that and that phone became one of the most flop phone because of that uh, iconic slider not being there so that is one part where the oneplus just rules over everything yeah that was the one plus 11 where they took it out and it's like it it's it's what sets them apart, like you said. So it, it was a silly move to take it out because a lot of people will buy it for that, especially if they've used it. Like I'm going to, I am going back to my Samsung phone, but I'm going to miss it. Like it's so nice to just be able to reach in your pocket and mute your phone without having to take it out. 